Hello, um, my name is Luis Herranz. I'm going to do the workshop today. Um, I'm from Spain. I live in Madrid. Um, I consider myself lucky because I'm a sponsor to work full time in the WordPress.org project. I'm sponsored by Automatic. And I'm currently focused on developer experience of Gutenberg and Full Site 18. So I'm very happy because I think it's, a, it's kind of a revolution for WordPress and for the web. Um, yeah, and previously to that, I was the tech lead of a headless framework for WordPress called Frontity. So uh, for the workshop, uh, I like to first prepare the local environment uh, so you can download what's necessary, start the NPM install. Uh, the Wi-Fi should work, but it's not the fastest. So yeah, let's let's uh, first prepare the local environment, and then I'll do an introduction and a small introduction to the interactivity API, um, and then we can create some blocks. So for this uh, for this workshop, the first thing that you have to do is you have to go to this repository. This is GitHub.com/slash Luis Ranz slash WCEU 2023. Okay, and here there are more instructions. So, well, in reality, yeah, the only thing that you're going to need for this is Node. Uh, we'll explain a, little, a bit later why you now only need that, okay? Uh, but you need version 16 or later. Um, here we have some technical assistance. If you have questions or you, if you get stuck or you have problems, just raise your hand and they can go. So I can keep talking and I don't have to stop. Uh, they also have three pen drives uh, with all these things in case connection is slow, okay? So first of all, um, who doesn't have Node 16 installed or later? Okay, so you can go here to download Node and install the latest version. If it's too slow, I don't know how big it is, if it's too slow, just Ask for a pen drive, okay? Um, after that, well, um, it's better that you clone the repository. So if you had Git, just clone the repository. This is the URL again. And the most important thing is uh, running npm install. Okay, so the repository is GitHub, Luis Arranz, WCEU 2023. Yes, yes, we have the SIP. So you can do that. Uh, but, well, yeah, you, you have a while for NPM install because we're going to be talking about uh, doing a small introduction and so on. Okay. So again, uh, download node if you don't have it. Clone this repository. You can also download the repository, but I think it's better if you clone it because then you can check out on each, on each step, and then run npm install. And then here in the repository, there's a special version of the Gutenberg, Gutenberg plugin, okay? Uh, you have to download that as well. <coughs> 
the most important thing probably is the npm install. If you don't have node, well, you need node for the npm install. Uh, but that's easy with the pen drives, and this zip is also on the on the pen drives. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'm going to continue and I'll check in a few minutes how you are doing. Okay. Is it okay? Very slow. Okay, maybe we should start rolling out the pen drives. <laughs> okay. So if you have a question that's good for the general audience, just, uh, yeah, let me know. If it's just uh, for them, just raise your hand and look at them and they will go and try to help. No WordPress. No you don't need WordPress. Uh, yes. Uh, and actually, yeah, that's a good question. Because you can clone this repository wherever you want. It doesn't have to be inside of a WP content or anything. Just No, just for now, just npm install. Okay. We'll continue. Yeah. Once we get to the to the real code, we will continue. Just npm install. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. So um, I want to do a brief introduction of the Interactivity API for those of you who don't know about it. Um, I don't want to get too deep here. I prefer to explain things uh, in more detail later when we are coding. But I think it's good to give like a yeah, uh, brief introduction. So the Interactivity API, which is what we are going to be using today to create uh, interactive blocks, it's a uh, it's a proposal right now uh, for an upcoming standard to build interactive blocks. This, this is coming to kind of fill the void in the Gutenberg API, where most of the APIs were for the editor and not for the front end of the site. Um, so this is the editor is still going to use React, okay? And in the front end part, use like a, where you would use a PHP to render the blocks or JavaScript then in the front end with vanilla JavaScript, jQuery or whatever you're using. Okay, interactivity API is only for the front end. Um, it doesn't affect how the editor works. It doesn't, for now, it doesn't interact with the editor. So uh, the idea here is that, yeah, for creating uh, blocks, uh, interactive blocks with this new API. You keep doing the editor in the same way that you're doing it, but in the front end, you can use this. And you can use it in both PHP and JavaScript at the same time. That we'll see uh, a bit later. So um, I wanted to show you what it can do uh, with a website. Well, first, uh, let me show you the proposal. There is a proposal. It was written by Mario, who's around, I don't know where, helping. <laughs> Hi, Mario. Um, and here in the proposal, there are a lot of details. Uh, it's, uh, there's, it's also the demo that I'm going to show now. Uh, so if you are interested, I'm not going to go like in so many detail as the proposal is a very long proposal, okay? And there's also long conversation around, so there's a lot of information there. Um, I'm, I'm gonna explain, I wanna explain more how it works. Um, but still, I'm, I'm gonna explain a little bit why is this way, because I think that's the main question that people had when we uh, wrote the proposal. It's why does it need to be the way that it is? Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna cover that. If you want more information about, um, yeah, what were the goals of these and so on, here uh, the, the full proposal and so on, here like uh, you can read the proposal, which is in make, co uh, make core. Okay, so what, 
kind of things can be built with the with this uh, interactivity API. Uh, we did a demo, uh, and in this demo, there are some interactive blocks here uh, that can uh, that have a state like front end state and can interact with each other. And there are also client side navigation. So if you click uh, on a page, uh, if you have a, a prefetching a strategy, then uh, navigation like feels instant between pages. Uh, also, like this, the state is uh, is uh, preserved uh, among navigations. Uh, you can do things like pagination in place. So these things, uh, for example, here we're changing the page. We're actually changing the page, but uh, you don't see like the refresh. Okay. Uh, there are other cool things that you can do, like uh, playing a trailer and then keep navigating for the web. Uh, if you change some state, for example, this is liked. So if I go here, you'll see that this, is, this state is, uh, we like this movie, and the state is preserved across all the pages. So if I navigate back, this state is not there anymore. Um, there is, uh, you can do things like instant search, for example, and search for things. Um, and this works with the block, block uh, with the block editor. So if we wanna, I don't know if I have the, no, this is the demo, okay. Let's go to the WP admin, let's open movies. They're here. So this is a block theme. And even though you can't create these type of ex user experiences, you can still drag and drop blocks. So we're gonna modify uh, the search template, for example. So if you go, uh, go here, template, search. Uh, and these are the list of the blocks. So this is a query loop block. Nothing special here. Um, we're gonna add some text here. So after Hi Workcam Europe. Uh, if you save this, then the next time that you navigate, so I don't know this for example, it's gonna be there because it's in the HTML. Uh, and you can add whatever you want. So for example, let's add a couple more. Uh, let's add the movies like button, uh, the movies score. These are movies score. Called score, yeah. Movie score, okay. And you can style them. So maybe do a group. Maybe put this like that. Maybe reduce the size. Change the color. Uh, add some padding. Yeah. Save it then you don't even have to refresh the page because it's not in the page, it's in the HTML, it's in the server. So you go, I don't know, go row, for example. There's a movie, okay, there you go. <laughs> um, it's, yeah, instead of doing, yeah, but the API is the HTML. That's, that's kind of the approach here. So wherever you put in the HTML, it's gonna, it's just um, this API is capable of doing these transitions, uh, maintaining the state. Like, like wiring, uh, like wiring it's, mo it's closer, if you're following latest React uh, progress, it's, it's closer 
to their server's component approach, which is not even related. But yeah, it's like there are some things that render on the server, and then instead of uh, requesting some data uh, through an API and having some JavaScript that can turn the data into the HTML, you just ask for the HTML. Then in that HTML, you know the spots that are interactive. Okay, so you, you can preserve them. So for example, you're writing here, and um, yeah, and, and the focus stays, and yeah, it's, it's just, uh, you don't lose the, the, sta the state of the UI, okay? Because everything that doesn't change is preserved. Okay, uh, so things for example like uh, this is a, a page navigation. You can see the query here changing, okay, between these two. So you refresh this page, it just goes there. Okay, it's, it's, the URL is still the source of truth. Okay, um, let's, well, I'll, I'll remove this later. Let's keep going. So how does it work? Um, we made the HTML the template language, and we exposed the, the primitives of the declarative frameworks uh, as directives. Let me explain that with code. It's, it's going to be easier. So for those of you who know uh, React, is it big enough like that? Because well, I hope so. Um, okay, so this is a regular React component. Uh, it, it's uh, if you prefer Vue or Svelte, uh, it's fine as well. They all they all share the same primitives. Uh, these kind of modern declarative frameworks. They all all of them have some way to declare a state to have side effects to add um, event handlers and to change, uh, yeah, to have conditionals and so on and so forth. So the thing here is that, and I think this is, I wanted to explain this because I think this is the main question that people had when we uh, released the proposal is that, okay, uh, Gutenberg is already using React in the editor. Why just don't we, why don't we use just uh, React on the front end as well. And the thing is that it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't play nice with WordPress. Um, WordPress has a PHP server, so it cannot understand JavaScript. Um, actually, it may seem like this is uh, HTML, and we could extract it somehow, but in reality, this is compiled to, whoa, this is compiled to something like deep and then this and then an array of children and then another and then button and then on click uh, on click and then the toggle here an array expanded and so on and so on then the toggle here this is a string and then uh, another children is open here, and another the paragraph here. That's before uh, React renders, right? Yes, this is uh, how React uh, builds. This is how GSX. Well, I'm using H because I'm used to, but it's, this is create element in React. H is in Preact, so this is create element. And you keep going, and you say this this element is not visible, and so on. So at the end, it's like a, a it's a JavaScript function that can contain any uh, arbitrary JavaScript here. So we can run these components in um, we can run these components in PHP. That's 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 a problem because. Whatever we do in the front end, we want to be able to compute that in the server. So the first HTML that we send to the, to the browser contains the HTML already in place. To, uh, like 
we don't want to send like empty HTML and then wait for the JavaScript to load and then start popping up things. That's not a good user experience, that not, that's not good for SEO. So it was very important for, for us, for the group of contributors working on this API to, um, to make sure that whatever you do, like the first thing that you send to the client in the HTML, that's gonna be the perfect uh, HTML. Uh, that's going to match whatever uh, JavaScript then is going to do. Server-side rendering. Server rendering. That's it. That's the yeah. That's the term. Um, so, for that reason, we need a system that PHP can understand. Okay. And this is the part where HTML, we make HTML the template language. So instead of adding uh, the state here in a component and the effects here and the I mean, handlers and so on, you add them to the HTML. So this is the state, okay? So this, uh, this is context because it's more, it's closer to what context is uh, in terms that you declare this state here and it's local to all these uh, to all these elements, and they can access them, they can change it, they can, um, if you can also declare effects here, uh, and they point to a function, and these effects only run on the, on the client, so on the client, you just have to declare that kind of callback here, so the same thing that you are doing here, we are doing here. Uh, and you create the kind of link here with these references. You can add um, cl uh, event handlers as well. So this is the same that this one here, uh, and it points to actions toggle here. So it's gonna do this, and it's gonna mutate the state. It's gonna say, okay, uh, this is mutating the state with one syntax. This, this syntax is a bit different, but it is doing basically the same. And then, uh, well, this conditional here, here we're using another directive, which is saying, okay, show this when context is open, it's true, uh, hide it when it's false. Um, the thing is that with this approach, we can create what are kind of React, and when I say React, uh, it's, it's the same for Vue as Belt or wherever you like, all these frameworks are Declarative frameworks, reactive frameworks, they all work in the same way internally, even though they may have like superficially, superficially different syntax. But you can create, um, with this system, you can create a, something, uh, like whatever you can create with React or Vue or Svelte or whatever, you can create it with PHP and, and with these uh, small JavaScript files. Because uh, the, the primitives here, the, the component primitives, are the same. And the declarativeness and react, reactivity, and everything, everything works like in a modern framework. But by doing it this way, like PHP can understand it. Uh, and we can, we can analyze this here, for example, this area expanded, and in the server, PHP can know if context is open or false, this may be some variable here. Uh, we'll show that in the, in the examples, this may be a dynamic variable, but then we compute this during the server-side rendering, during the rendering, and then we know if we need to add the area expanded or we need to add it with true or false, and if we need to uh, wrap this into a template or not, depending on if we need to show this or not, and so on. Uh, did you have a question? No, okay, sorry. This is an example of how, how you, yes, how you do, how would you do something like this with this syntax, okay? I wanna, yeah, I, I wanna explain why we did it this way, okay? And also, um, what, what is possible with this, which anything that you can build with React or Viewers Belt, you should be able to build with this because it has the same primitives. 
And it, it kind of works in the same way. This is built on top of Preact. Preact Pre in the front end. So you won't see Preact, but yeah, Preact is powering everything. And actually, it's a, it's a very it's it's very close to Preact. Um, we choose Preact because it's a smaller, it's more performant, it's very extensible, it's very it's very, very well written, uh, and so on. For a series of reasons, there are more conversations in the proposal, but yeah, it's a, it's a great fit and things like. WP effect or WP context are basically pre small preact components that are using context and effect and in preact. So that that's that's a good point because you are basically writing uh, with this syntax, but you are creating something like uh, a preact application underneath, and that's the reason also, like then we can enable this kind of user experiences. Because uh, here, like this type of client-side navigation, like Preact is doing all the heavy lifting here, we're getting the HTML, and Preact is doing the diffing between the two HTMLs and doing the preservation of the UI state and so on. So Preact gives us uh, a lot in this regard. But we have to, like our proposal is to write it this way, because if we write it this way, then we can make PHP understand it. And I wanted to mention also, uh, let's see, HTML API. It's using, in the server, it's using, um, for now, the HTML tag processor. If you don't know about it, it's, uh, it's, it's an amazing uh, new API for WordPress that can understand HTML. So you can uh, get some HTML, uh, traverse it, find attributes, uh, replace them, add new ones, and so on. And there's going to be more. Uh, so this was made by Adam and Dennis. I don't know if Dennis is here. But, well, it's an amazing API, and Dennis is going to continue um, creating like even more. So the thing is that now WordPress, for the first time, it's going to be able to understand HTML much better. So we can, like, uh, we can do all these sorts of things because now it can navigate the HTML, detect the directives, and do the necessary changes to do the server-side rendering perfectly. Uh, there are also more benefits here. We'll see them, I think we'll see them in the code, but things like, for example, things that are very complex in, uh, using a React component or a viewer's belt that they all compile to JavaScript um, are very easy with this approach. So for example, maybe you want to use uh, translations here. So you can do this. Uh, and it just works. You don't have to send the translation in a JSON and, and, a, and a library to do the translation, like to, to use here some kind of uh, a library yeah, with JavaScript or wherever, you don't have to do that. You don't have to run this on the client because you can just modify the HTML because these directives are spread up among the, the uh, HTML. You can just change the HTML. And that's, that's something that is for WordPress is very important because uh, there are a lot of modifications of the HTML happening with a lot of filters as well. So imagine, I don't know, you have an image and there is a filter that's gonna add the source set. So if a filter is injecting the source set because it's looking into the database and so on and so forth, if you do try to do the same here, uh, it doesn't work because this component, uh, when it's compiled to JavaScript, is a kind of a black box. So if you send it to the so imagine that like you set the source uh, the source set correctly in the server, but then when this component hydrates, that filter that changed the HTML is not going to be there in the um, is not going to be there in the client. So it's going to reverse the changes. So it has many benefits to do it this way. Um, yeah, and I wanted to explain it because I think is the, the main thing that people think like. 
why do I have to write it this way? Why, why? Uh, which is a bit, uh, it's a bit, I don't know, new syntax for those of you who haven't used uh, Alpine.js, which is a framework that uh, was somehow an inspiration for this syntax. Okay, uh, how are you doing with the npm install? Uh, how many of you already have the npm install finished? Oh, oh, okay, how many of you don't? Oh, okay, that's not that many. Okay, are you on, okay, cool. Just ask for the pen drive, it's, it's not working. Okay, cool. Yeah. What about the caching? Caching. Caching. Caching just works because you're doing here um, the API, it's the exact same URL. If you inspect here the in the network and you say, okay, let's do a navigation to here, for example, okay, you'll see that the request, maybe I did it before. We're, 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 prefetching, uh, we're prefetching very ag aggressively here, like all, all the uh, links of the page. Um, so, but if you navigate, you're requesting the exact same URL. So if you navigate here, this is what you get. So, you had get the full HTML and then with Preact we do the replacement for this type of experience. Which by the way, this type of client side transitions um, are not like, we, we don't want them to be um, like the default for WordPress or something. We just wanted to create like a new API where these type of experiences are possible, uh, which was very difficult uh, before. And now with this, um, yeah, after the, Showing you the 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 code and, and going through the um, through the uh, different steps, I want to show you some examples of, for example, how what what's the code necessary for this instant search, or a couple of more examples so you can get an idea. So in terms of catching, nothing changes. You're just navigating a WordPress site uh, with the same HTML requests, HTTP requests to the HTML files. This is the default value on the server. So the data that comes from the server is HTML, it's always that that is already in false. Yes. Unless the JavaScript knows, hey, there's a different state for this. this yes, state. but you should send it, uh, you should send the initial value. So in the, in the server, you create the initial values for everything. So when the JavaScript loads, there are no like layout changes. Yeah, uh, layout shifts and so on. So this should be, uh, yeah. Yeah, but but yeah, but this is is the default. But you are sending it as the default, so it's also the default in the client. So yeah, unless you then click on something and change it, it is not going to change. Okay. Well, we'll we'll see more um, with examples. Yes, uh, it's like uh, the first frame of the application, then you can start changing the state and everything is reactive, so you only have to uh, change the state and then the HTML change in response. Yeah. But yeah, we'll, we'll see more in the, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's easier to see when with the code, I think. <laughs> okay, so that's, uh, that's basically like a small introduction, like making the, why, we make the HTML, the template languages, and how the component primitives are exposed as directives. Um, how can I use it and when? So with the Gutenberg plugin, um, there is a inter we're working on an interactivity branch, and we don't plan to merge it before the WordPress 
6.3 feature freeze, which is at the end of this month, if I'm not mistaken. Um, since then, we are testing it like uh, internally for, uh, for the interactive core blocks uh, that may or may not get it into 6.3. Um, but yeah, the important part, which is this package, so you can start using it, uh, testing it, and giving us feedback, is the WordPress interactivity package. It's going to be available, yeah, at the end of this month in the Gutenberg plugin, just installing the Gutenberg plugin. That's the reason uh, I asked you to download this special version of the plugin, the Gutenberg interactivity API plugin, which is, uh, our, which is already in the, what would Gutenberg will be at the end of the month, and it's, it's what is in the interactivity branch of the Gutenberg repository. Then, our kind of target is to have things ready for WordPress 6.4, 6 uh, which is, I uh, think, uh, the feature freeze is uh, at the end of September or something like that. Uh, this is still a proposal. There are still discussions. We are still shaping this API. But, well, if everything goes well, hopefully we'll, we'll there's up uh, from WordPress 6.4, you will be able to use uh, to use it like in production without the Gutenberg plugin. Okay. Um, before we start coding, um, I want to introduce Adam. We're going to use uh, WP Now to create a WordPress instance. That's the reason you only need Node. Uh, and it's part of the WordPress Playground project. I don't know if you haven't heard about it. I thought that it's so cool that I should invite uh, Adam to do a, a, a little presentation about WordPress Playground because we're going to use it. And for those who don't know it about, about it, it's pretty awesome. So, Adam, if you want to come? Playground tab also in the browser? Yes, sure. Hey everyone. Uh, uh, da, 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 first slide, all right. <laughs> Hello everyone. Uh, and Madam, I work at Automatic, and I want to show you a little something that I've been working on recently that will make today's workshop a little bit easier for us. So it's called the WordPress Playground, and it's WordPress running entirely in JavaScript. So this screenshot I took here, it's WordPress running completely in my web browser, in a browser tab. It doesn't need uh, PHP on the server, doesn't need MySQL, doesn't even need internet at this point. It just works entirely in a uh, browser. And uh, I even have a live demo here. I can navigate through this website. Mm, it's entirely in this browser tab. I can create posts, I can mm, publish them, I can work with this, I can even switch PHP and WordPress versions, and it's going to just um, you know, like very thoughtful content, Adam. All right, uh, it's going to just work. So uh, the, I'm going to tell you very briefly why this is useful, what problem it solves, how we are going to use it today, and give you a few cool examples. So the primary problem WordPress Playground solves is that WordPress is difficult. And I don't mean creating WordPress websites, but getting started with WordPress at all. Like many workshops start with a lot of WordPress setup instructions as in download the, this environment, install MySQL, install database, it takes quite a bit of time. But even if I'm just a new WordPress user and I Google for uh, WordPress, how to install it, I'm probably going to find that installation takes five minutes. But then in reality, I'll find this list of steps, there's a lot of them, They'll, they're going to take me quite a bit more than five minutes, unless I'm willing to get my, out my credit card and pay a hosting company. So uh, another problem with 
WordPress and its setup is learning. If I'm a new developer, I just want to get my development environment up and running. Well, I'll probably find a setup uh, instructions like these that are going to take me hours, maybe days, and these particular ones, I actually, I wrote them. I don't like having them there. I don't want to have setup instructions in tutorials. So if that setup is difficult, then maybe people are not going to be that keen to use WordPress and are going to use tools that are easier to set up. So Playground solves these problems with a single click. So as we've seen, this is a live WordPress running in my browser. I could turn off the internet and click through it and it would still work. I'm not going to do that because I don't know what else is going to break if I turn off the internet on this laptop, but you can go to this website and don't take my word for it. So this is the in-browser version. Today, we'll be focusing more on the CLI version, the local one, and this uh, is a Visual Studio Code plugin that uh, we don't need it today, but just wanted to show you that it exists, you install it, you click Start WordPress Server button, and even if you don't have any PHP, any MySQL, any web server on your computer installed, this is just going to start WordPress on your computer. Now, the tool we are going to be using today is called uh, WP Now, and my colleagues from Automatic have been doing a lot of work on it. Uh, Antonio over here, Wojtek and Kat. And this is WordPress with a single node command. You install a package, which we, which we all just did with npm install, run a command, this is, uh, Louis will be showing that in a second, and that's it, WordPress is running. You don't have to do anything else. That's because this entire thing runs on JavaScript. So if you run it in a plugin directory, it's just going to auto-activate that plugin for you. So it pulls the entire WordPress and it just starts it with your plugin. Same for themes. And if you start it in WP content directory, it will also understand that. And you can even have entire WordPress installation locally and it will also do the right thing. It can work with MySQL, it can work with SQLite and it makes things much more smooth. And you can even switch between different PHP and WordPress versions using this WP Now tool. So how does it work? Like this is the, this is the thing that uh, is always confusing at the beginning. So there is this new technology called WebAssembly and it means we can now build programs that used to work on the, uh, used to have to be compiled to um, specifically for different operating systems, different processors. Now we can build them to a form that works in web browsers, in JavaScript. So this thing uh, right here, I'm oh, sorry, uh, WordPress Playground is uh, using PHP that's built to WebAssembly. JavaScript can run it. So this solves one of the problems. Now we can run PHP in the browser or on Node or on VS Code or on desktop, app, mobile app, like anywhere we have JavaScript. Now, that solves one problem. The other problem is WordPress runs on MySQL, the database. It needs specifically MySQL. It doesn't run on any other database. However, we cannot run MySQL in WebAssembly. So Playground or WP Now, all these tools, they work with SQLite. And the way they work is that there is an official SQLite plugin for WordPress. If you install it, it will take all MySQL queries, translate them to SQLite, run them, get the results, translate them back to the form that WordPress needs, and WordPress thinks it talks to MySQL, it has a different database there, it works beautifully, you can install it on any WordPress website, 99% of core unit tests pass on this, and the other 1% is just specific to MySQL. So here's other few other cool things you can do with Playground, just as a demo for you. So. Playground actually supports live code snippets in a browser, which means new developers can learn on their mobile phone, on a tablet, in a break, wherever, like on a phone. Oh, and this is a, and actually like this is by the way a tutorial of the HTML API that uh, Louis was talking about. It has interactive code examples. You can run them, you can play with them. Don't have to install anything. So this would solve the setup problem that I showed you earlier. Uh, another thing is that Playground can be used for also, also for live demos on, uh, on your website. So if you are, build a WordPress plugin, mm, you want people to use it, maybe buy it, well, instead of screenshots and videos, you can put a live WordPress website, like embed it on your homepage or wherever, 
and people will be able to like, use it, click through it, if it's a WooCommerce store, like even get to the checkout. And, sorry? Oh, I, th I thought it was a question. And uh, even get to the checkout. And if one person changes something in WP Admin, like put some weird content there, no one else is going to see it because this is private to every single user because it runs in their web browser. So uh, there's also a few APIs for Playground to, to customize that, like to, to, to run these plugins. Uh, you can write a JSON file and tell it to run the specific PHP code, maybe insert a post, install, install a plugin, log, in me, uh, log me in as an admin, do anything at all. Or there's also a JavaScript API that gives you entirely full control over it. You can write to the file system that PHP uses and you can download plugins from your own repository, not just the WordPress plugin directory. You can build pull request previewers, crazy stuff. So Playground is WordPress that runs in your browser or in your terminal or wherever you have JavaScript. It's ready with a single click. It's an official WordPress project. It's free, open source, GPL license. And if you want to learn more about it, here's a QR code. There's a link. And if you search for WordPress Playground virtually anywhere, like you'll, you'll find a lot of cool stuff. So that's all I wanted to show you. Thank you, Adam. Very genius. Okay, so we're gonna use it now. Um, and if actually, if you go to the code and inspect the package JSON, you will see like there's only like, like a WordPress scripts, which is the bundler, the webpack, and so on, and WP now, and running npm start is just running both of them at the same time, and that's. <laughs> That's all what it takes. Okay. Um, so to start the project, you can run npm start. It's going to open localhost. And then once you're there, uh, you have to install the Gutenberg plugin. So, okay, is everybody uh, ready? Have the repository, done npm install. Is anyone missing? Everybody's okay, good. So, I have it running here. So you just have to go to the folder and do npm start, and in like a couple of seconds, or, yeah, a couple of seconds, the website is working. And now go to the dashboard, plugins, Add new, and uh, yeah, upload the, the the Gutenberg plugin, and you should have this Gutenberg interactivity, which is the interactivity branch on the last version of Gutenberg. Then there are three ways to follow the workshop, this part of the workshop, um, writing all the code, which I don't really recommend, unless you're familiar with the interactivity API, I guess. Um, copy and paste the code snippets. If you go to the, here, to the repository, here in time to code, you can expand it and there's a link for the code snippets, which is basically um, just the commits, okay? So all the steps are here. Step zero is the uh, initial step. Uh, if you clone it, you should be on a step zero, okay? And then you can see the diff for each spec, uh, a step. Uh, if you click here on the commit uh, hash, okay? So again, repository, Scroll down, click here on the code snippets. It's gonna open this, okay? Here you have all the steps. And you can look at the steps. I'm gonna be looking at the steps as well, okay? Uh, and then click on the hash, and you have 
like, okay, the difference, the files that were modified and the modifications of, of each file, okay? So you can come here in each step, uh, copy and paste if you want, or the other option is to just use Git to move through the steps. It's basically you can do uh, Git checkout uh, and there are branches for each step. So you just have to do Git checkout to step one, Git checkout to step two, and so on. If you uh, I don't know, get behind and want to catch up, just do Git checkout and wherever the step, like discard the local changes, Git checkout and step uh, wherever step we are in and you should be uh, at that moment. We are starting at zero, yes. So I'm on main here. Main is the, um, it's on the last step, but you should be like, um, if, if you clone it, you're already on a step zero. I just want to show you a little bit what we are going to do. We are going to create these, uh, we're going to create these blocks. Okay, there's one like parent block called quiz progress, and then there are three, three quizzes here, okay? And then each of them have an open menu. Uh, there are two type of quizzes. One you can answer yes or no. Um, another one you can like input the response. And once you're, um, uh, once you're finished, you can check the correct answers. That's it. Um, So, is everybody ready? Let's see if I'm forgetting anything. No, okay. Should we start? Uh, let me, yeah, close some things here. So, okay. Let's close this one, have my commits. Okay, um, there are a lot of steps. I think after step 12 or so, there are no new concepts. It's just repeating it over and over. So if we get to a step 12, I'm fine. Uh, you can do the rest uh, at home if you want. Like my, my main goal here is that you, you get like a, a feeling of how this works and how you write uh, interactive things uh, using this API. Uh, so yeah. It's not like important if you write the code or not. It's, it's more important if you just kind of get a feeling of how this works and how you use this, uh, this API to kind of write uh, stuff. Uh, and also just, uh, I, I want you to, to have this uh, repository clone and working in your computer. So if you go home next week um, and want to start playing with it, uh, testing things and so on, like you have like a project that is uh, already working. Okay, let's go then. Um, let's go to the first step. Well, let's let's explain a little bit. We're gonna work. Oh, uh, so you have to go to a to a post, create a post, edit the hello world post, wherever you want. Uh, yeah, well, you don't have to create a group. I created it because um, just to add some padding and settings to demonstrate that you can do that. But um, yeah, add a quiz prog a progress block. <coughs> and inside as one or two um, quizzes. We're gonna work first on the quiz. You can also add it outside of the quiz progress, but if you get, if we get, if there's enough time to start do, uh, working on the quiz progress, then you will want to do that. And here, there's the is configuration on the left, on the block options that you show with this button. Uh, there's, yeah, you can choose between text input or yes or no, and yeah, for the yes or no question, so it's red the best color 
yeah, it's blue to school. I was trying to come up with uh, interesting questions, but how <laughs> uh, and you can also change here to text input and yeah, have at least one of the um, at least one of the yes or no uh, type of quiz and at least one of the text input uh, type of quiz. So at least add two blocks here. You have questions. Again, yeah, feel free to stop me. No, no, you don't need a group. It was just. We more, right? You don't have to create a group. Like, you can. Yeah, it was just to give like a little more. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can even create quizzes outside of the quiz progress, but as we are then going to work on the quiz progress, we're gonna work first on the quiz and then on the quiz progress. So if you leave it like this, yeah, it's prepared. Okay, so I'm not gonna explain anything about log JSON, edit, and so on. It's out of the scope. So we just have like uh, the edit here with the controls and what you're seeing in the editor, the block JSON with all the attributes and so on, a bit of CSS here, and then the render PHP files. These are gonna be both uh, dynamic blocks. And this is like, well, uh, the, the, the starting point. So I'm on step zero, yes. So now if you render, here you're gonna see something like this, okay? It's not interactive uh, yet, and this is like the first. So we are doing an echoing a question here, translated, um, echoing the attributes, uh, the question, so what you wrote as a question. Then we have a, depending on the attribute, we are um, sending either a button, two buttons with yes or no, or in, in input text, and that's it. They, and this is this is not interactive. Okay. Uh, where are my commits? Can you repeat? No. Okay. This should be this should be your starting point, okay? This is I'm still in step zero. We're gonna work on the quiz block, so source blocks quiz, and we're mainly work, being working on the render, and we are going to create a beauty JS file. We're working. We are gonna work with those. Okay. So first step, the first thing that we are gonna do, we're gonna add interactivity to the block JSON. Okay, as of today, uh, you need to add this to your interactive blocks because there are some things happening behind the scenes. Okay, so blocks like the quiz, the block JSON of, of the quiz block, you just go there and add supports interactivity somewhere. And then the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to make the block interactive. So that's with that data WP interactive. So uh, maybe in the future, it's gonna be like uh, automatically detect if a block is interactive or no and do things like this. Maybe you don't need to do this. And here we're gonna add the data WP interactive. It's just telling uh, um, uh, the framework, okay, this part of the page is, is interactive. Uh, you should like try to find the directives here and do, do your thing. But probably in the future it won't be necessary. And we're gonna do one thing. So right now, mm -mm, here we're showing the, um, the buttons and the input and we don't want to show them. We, don't, we want to have like a button to show and hide them uh, so they're not present all the time. So we're not gonna need this. 
So for that, we are going to use local estate, which is a context. Okay, and we're going to put the local estate here in the top level uh, uh, div. And this is going to be uh, is open, false. We're going to use the WC EU 2023 namespace, uh, which is it's the namespace of your block. So if you're creating a plugin called I know, my plugin, this would be my plugin. And then with this context, what we are going to do is to uh, say, OK, I want to add an attribute to this div here. So this div, uh, the div that uh, contains the buttons and the input. And we're going to say, OK, I want to use hidden uh, and add it if it's not open and remove it if it's open. OK. So I'm going to also draw here a small scully draw. So context is local state, OK. And we can connect it to directives. And here, WP bind is to change the HTML attributes. So uh, I'm going to be writing also kind of the, um, the alternative syntax that you would write in React. Again, same would be in view with the view syntax, same would be in spell with spell syntax, and so on. So this data WP being hidden, it would be like the equivalent of doing this in JSX. Okay? So instead of writing this, you just write this. This is it's a bit long because this is valid HTML. We need to name a space it and so on. But yeah, basically, this is the same. But in a way that, yeah, that uh, PHP can process it. So you just save that. Uh, and I think that's it for the step one changes. And then you refresh the page. It's gone. There's no JavaScript at all. Uh, this is because, yeah, the server was able to take a look here and say, okay, this is false, so this should be the opposite. Then I should add hidden here, and it works. Okay, let's keep going. Now, for the next step, we're going to create a JavaScript file because, well, it's not, still not interactive. Still, you cannot do anything. So yeah, we need JavaScript in the front end to do uh, some interactivity. So back to the block JSON, uh, we're going to add a view script here. So we enqueue uh, the Vue.js file and create a Vue.js file here in the quiz folder. And then we can add a toggle. OK, so to add a toggle, we go back to the render PHP. OK, and um, yeah, where is the toggle? Uh, below the question. Below attribute <coughs> question. OK, so you can hear we add a toggle, uh, which is a button with a directive here that points, has a reference to an action. Its name is based as well, and then inside these you can put whatever you want, it's PHP rendered, so we can do uh, echo of open, for example, uh, and that's gonna work. And again, to follow on uh, how is the alternative, uh, so what you are doing in reality, or what's the alternative uh, in React, is something like this. So. It's similar to doing this in JSX. Uh, you are doing the on click here. Oh, by the way, there is a, there is syntax. Uh, you're gonna see. I'm gonna explain a little bit. So all the directives starts with data wp. Then it's the name of the um, of the directive. So here would be context. Here would be on. Here would be bind. Okay. Then some directives have like a second 
parameter or something like that. When they need like more information, in this case, on it's uh, to attach them in handlers. So this is like attach a click uh, handler here, uh, modify the hidden attribute, and so on. Okay. So this is how you would write it in J in JSX, but here we write we write it like this. And now we need like we need to create this. So we can go here and we can do uh, import store from WordPress interactivity, and then we are going to just create the store. And let's see if I don't write typos. And then inside of your actions, I think this is called toggle, and this is going to be a function. Um, we don't need this file anymore. Okay. So uh, what we want to do in this action is to mutate the state. This is declarative and it's reactive. You shouldn't do DOM manipulations yourself. You should say, okay, this attribute is linked to the value of this part of the state, and then all you have to do in your actions is just change the state. So you can get context from here and do context double cu. Uh, this is open and get the uh, opposite value because it's a toggle. And that's it. You change, uh, you change this value here. Everything is reactive, so hidden should disappear. Let's see if I didn't make any mistakes. So, okay, we have the open, open button. Uh, yeah, it works fine. Okay, everything good? To the Vue.js? Yes? Sure. So, yeah, you have, uh, you also have it here in the, in the commits section, okay? So if you come here, step two, click on the hash, and it should also be here, you can copy and paste, you can do git checkout. So, we are declaring actions, our name is space and then toggle, and inside the toggle, we are just changing the state. So, now, yeah, we're introducing actions here, and actions can change the local state, okay? And we can trigger actions with the WP on directive. Okay? Okay, let's keep going. Step three. For step three, we are gonna add small, very small accessibility um, Behavior. Um, I like to review this with an accessibility expert because I, I didn't. Uh, maybe I'll make more steps if I get someone today to review this. So, but for now, uh, I'm not an expert in accessibility, but let's add something so you have to get an idea because accessibility is a huge thing. Uh, and yeah, I'm very happy because I think it's uh, the interactivity API is, is a good fit for uh, creating accessible uh, interactive experiences. So we're, we're gonna only change the render PHP here. We're gonna create a um, unique, um, a unique ID. I don't know if this is the best way or not, probably not, uh, but it seemed to work. To work. Um, and then in our button, apart from the actions, uh, fr from the action, we're gonna add an area expanded attribute, also linked to the uh, context is open, uh, part of the state. So, okay, so now we have bind, for area expanded, and in this element, 
the area expanded is going to be false uh, when no, uh, false when it's open is false and true when it's open is true and then we are also adding the id here for the area controls so this is Okay. Uh, we can check these elements here, and you can see area expanded is false. Okay, and when you open this, it turns to true. Okay, you close it again, it turns to false. Pretty simple. Okay. Step three, that was a step three, right? Step four. Okay, in a step four, we're gonna, okay, what we're gonna do in a step four is um, we wanna have only one question open at a time, okay? So I want to have like a more like a global state. So if I open one and then open out another, the first one is going to be to be closed, okay, automatically for us. So what we are gonna do is we're gonna create an estate um, selected. So this is global state. Uh, you can add global state to the store. It would be somehow similar for those of you who have used uh, Redux or something uh, or another state manager. Uh, this is global to the application. So we are gonna declare a selected null uh, with initial state of null. And then we're gonna store here the, um, the quiz that is open, okay? So instead of st storing it like in a local state here, we're gonna store it here. And for that reason, we have to introduce a couple of concepts. So, there's local state, which is context, oops. And there's global state, which is a state in the store. And then there's also what we usually refer to as derived state, which is state, so this would be derived state, and this would be uh, selectors. We call them selectors because that's how they call them in Redux, maybe it's not the final name. Uh, happy to hear other opinions. The thing is that in applications, in, in this type of reactive applications, you only create, uh, you don't duplicate a state. If one state needs to, can be derived from other part of the state, you just create a function that computes that on the fly, okay? And we'll, we're gonna be using that a lot, so don't worry, there are gonna be plenty of examples about that. So we create an estate, and then we're gonna change from storing wherever this is open or false here in the, sta in the state, and we're gonna create a selector to know if, it's op if each one is open or closed. Uh, okay. Yes, the global state is accessible from any block. So that's the difference. The global state is, ac is accessible across the page. Context is only accessible to the children. So, and here, instead of it's open or false, in the context, we're gonna, um, we're gonna store the ID, okay? Because we are gonna use that ID to say which one is selected. We are gonna store here the ID, okay? So we have the unique ID for each quiz, and we're gonna store it there. Um, so the action here, we're gonna change it. No, sorry. 
we're going to change it instead of it stayed here so instead of doing this thing we're going to just say okay we're going to store here in state uh, selected wherever is uh, the, this id okay and now context is open doesn't exist anymore but we are going to create a derived state here uh, to see if this particular quiz is open or not. So selectors here, and then our selectors uh, is open. It's getting the state and the context, computing that on the fly and saying, OK, is this block selected? Uh, when it's selected is when the ID stored here is the same that the ID in the block. And that should do it. I think I've added everything. No, OK. And of course, now we need to change uh, here, because now it's open. It's not in the context. It's a selector. OK. So now if you go here, they still open. But when you click on one, the other is closed. And the thing is that we don't have to change anything uh, in terms of what happens, for example, with area expanded. As long as it's pointing to the right part of the state, let's see if I can do, it's going to be correct. So we have area expanded. In this one is false, and area expanded, maybe I should make it slightly bigger. So we have this one. Uh, we have this one. OK, we have R expanded false here, R expanded true here. If I click on this one, both are going to change. This to false, this to true, because they are pointing to the same uh, part of the state. In this case, a selector, which is derived from context and state at the same time. Uh, Can you uh, pass a microphone? I don't know if, or I repeat the, I'll repeat the question. Go ahead. Uh, can you change the global state without using the context? Uh, yes, you can do whatever you want. Uh, like because we, on the UJS, we... You have ac access to the state, and you can mutate it. You can put here whatever you want. No problem at all. This is JavaScript. It's plain JavaScript. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, I, mean, we take the I mean, we take the ID from the... Um, from the context? Uh, PHP, yes. where you're right, from the context. Uh, can we take it from s somewhere else? Sure. <coughs> OK. Um, but not with context. You, can, you have access in the actions. You have access to That's the context. on the global state, yeah. Uh, on the PHP file, mm -hmm. to take some data from here, uh, the only way is with context to set it on the global state. You can set state, yes. We'll show that in a, oh, okay. a bit later. <laughs> OK, let's keep going. Uh, uh, this was step four, step five. We're gonna, oh, we're gonna do a toggle. Okay, we lost the toggle. So now you click again and it's not a toggle anymore. And yeah, I want to, it to be a toggle. So just this small change uh, here in the view file. Instead of doing this, we're gonna check first if selected is uh, it's equal. And in that case, we're gonna turn it to null because it's already selected. And if not, we are going to do the same that we were doing uh, here. So just that, very small change. And now this should toggle as well. OK, nothing new here. Um, this is step five, step six. Here, OK, OK. So here we're going to do, uh, we're going to introduce a new uh, directive. What we want to do is, here it says open, but this is a toggle. So 
we want to change it to, uh, from open to close. Okay, so we need to change the text here. Uh, and to do so, we, we can do it with, uh, with, a, with another directive. Um, I haven't showed the uh, directives, like the list of directives. They're somewhere here. If you go to the proposal, yeah, this is the list of directives. We'll see, I think, most of them today. Um, but yeah, you can, you can come here and, and see like the rest of them. They are like the primitives of these type of applications. So, okay, we are gonna do a tackle text. We're gonna change the text here in this button. So instead of saying just open here, we're gonna uh, say, okay, from now on, the value, like the inner text of this button is, is gonna be wherever you put here in selectors uh, toggle text. And for that, it's gonna be derived state again. It's not new state, it's derived. So we're gonna do uh, Toggle text, so we're gonna add it here. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna add this uh, new selector, which if it's selected, it's gonna say close. If not, it's gonna say open. So now if you click, it says open. If you don't, it says close. So, you cannot not only change attributes, you can also change oops, the inner text. The inner text with that. And the thing, uh, okay, this is step six. We go to step seven. And the thing is that, uh, yeah, like we're repeating this logic here. Uh, so if you later change it, this to something different, I don't know, something different, wherever you're changing it, you have to remember to change it here, which is not good. So you also can use selectors inside selectors, okay? And start creating this kind of graph of reactivity where things are only defined once, uh, they are only present once in your state, so you just have to mutate those, and th the rest of the system just reacts. Um, so, let's do something like this. So here, we're gonna get the store, and then we're gonna turn this into, uh, uh huh? and we're gonna return this, and we're gonna get, we're gonna structure here, because uh, from the <coughs> store, instead of the structure in here, and here we're gonna say selectors, uh, the namespace and is open, so yeah. And, and then we are gonna pass the store. We're thinking about like just this, this may not be necessary. Maybe in the future we just kind of auto-execute the selectors. But yeah, for now you have to pass the store. And now we're saying, okay, uh, now we're pointing to this one here. So if we change here, then this one reacts and so on. So I think, yeah, that's the only modification of this step. So nothing should have changed. E, yeah. What about the translation? If you pass it to the JS? That's the next step. Good question. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Keep <laughs> no problem, no problem, keep it coming. <laughs> so step eight. Of course, it's like, okay, now this is in JavaScript, this is not translated. So we're gonna add it, and we're gonna do, yeah, two things. We're gonna Pre-populate the state, okay, the global state in the server. 
and we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to add, you can add whatever you want. So you can add translations, you can add dynamic data from the database, and wherever you add here, state, uh, namespace, and wherever, it's going to be used uh, in the server for the server side rendering. So in the same way that uh, you saw that we were using context as well. So the function to populate the store here, for now it's called WP store, which is kind of the homologous of this one. And yeah, you have to create a state, WP, uh, WC, blah, blah, blah. And then we're gonna have like, yeah, we're gonna put two strings in the state. Cause, and you only have to do this for the translations that you wanna change dynamically. Uh, cause this is not going to be in the HTML. In the HTML, uh, once, once this is server render, this is gonna be either one of them. So we need the other. And when we change it back, we also need the previous one. Okay, so here in the in the in PHP you can yeah you can pre-populate with initial values. You don't need the whole logic here, and actually you don't need to repeat the state because uh, this state is serialized and sent to the browser. Uh, but you need to also add like the initial value of the selectors because the selectors logic. So this, for example, this uh, is like. Uh, PHP cannot access this JavaScript file and understand that this uh, relates to is open and so on. So this is the only thing that needs to be duplicated or, or maybe not duplicated because usually you don't need the whole logic here, but you need the initial state of the selectors. Anyway, we declare state, we declare selectors here, and now we can use them. So here, this is going to be server side rendered with the correct value, which is the initial one, which is open menu. Um, and then we have to change the uh, toggle text here. So instead of using like the hard coded English versions of this, you use the parts that, yeah, the, the, whatever it's in, in the state for this. And, wherever it's in the state for this. I used uh, open menu and close menu because I know they have translations so we can test it instead of open even though this is not like a menu menu. Okay, it still works. Close menu, open menu. If we go here and change the... Um, uh, this is in general. Let's change it to Spanish. Abrir el menú, sí, no, cerrar el menú. Okay, so that's one way you can do translations for dynamic fields. I'm going to switch it back to English. So now we've seen that you can like pre-populate the state on the server. So we were already pre kind of pre-populating context, but you can also pre-populate the state, pre-populate selectors. <coughs> and yeah, that's uh, serialized and sent from the server. So this would be the server here, and this would be the browser. This would be kind of the initial state. Okay, so you, you, you create the initial state here. I think that's the complete step. Yes? Okay, is it, is it clear? Yep. So that was step uh, eight, let's go to step nine. Okay, well, yeah, you can, now that we have like we're using WP store here. We can, like, most of the time, there won't be, uh, like, you would just create the initial state in the server. There's no need to create it on the front end. 
because it's serialized. So we can add that one here. Oh yeah, that, that was, <laughs> okay, that, that was a whole step. Uh, and that was step nine, step 10. Okay, let's, let's add some uh, side effects. So now what we wanna do is to, when I, when I open the menu, okay, for accessibility, I wanna focus on the yes, okay? So let's do that and introduce a new directive. So in, the, in this button, which is the one that we wanna focus, we're gonna use um, WP effect so let's go to the yes button here. And we are gonna add WP effect uh, with a reference to a callback called focus on open, okay? And this would be similar to making button a component and then using use effect and then focus on open, react. So that's, that's basically what's happening um, and uh, like under the scene. So, um, and then we're gonna create this effect in JavaScript. So we add here to the store uh, effects, the namespace, and this function. And what this function is gonna do, well, it's gonna use the selector, it's open, because we don't want to repeat that logic. And when this changes from false to true, it's gonna focus the reference. The reference here, is this element, okay? So also similar to React, you have access to, to the reference. Um, and, and this effect is, um, is reactive. So if there's something, so when you execute it, if there's pointing somewhere to the state or context, the state and context are both special in the way that they are reactive. They are powered by uh, preact signals. signals. Uh, so if you execute this, and inside of this, uh, there's a state and there is context, okay? If, like, it, it, it creates kind of an internal graph, okay? Because this is like fine-grained reactivity. I don't know if you're familiar uh, with things like, uh, with signals, things like solid and so on, but in the moment that selected changes or ID changes here, it's gonna re-trigger this, okay? So it's gonna make sure that this tr is triggered every time. It's, it's also, so it's gonna, be, it's gonna be triggered when this changes from false to true and when true to false. When it changes to from false to true, it's gonna do the focus. When it changes from true to false, it's not gonna do anything because well, it's gonna execute, but it's not, it's not going to do anything. Okay, let's try this. Um, it's not, oh, uh, yeah, let's, let's open the menu here with a focus here, so we can see, yeah, uh, and it's working. So, that's the other kind of, um, Uh -huh. Directives, so here, this would be like uh, the WP effect directive for, with effects, that you, so you can trigger like side effects and so on. So, again, the same, you would use it when you would use like use effect in React, basically. Okay. Um, Step 11, now we're gonna add it as well to the input, okay? So we also want, when we open here the input, we also want to focus on the input, so we can just add the same WP effect pointing to the same function because the logic can be reused perfectly. So yeah, we, I did here, and now refresh, and the focus is there. 
Okay, step 12. And I'm, I'm glad we made it, because I think this is the last one, like with real information. Um, we're gonna do a close on ask. And here we wanna capture the ask when the focus is on like on 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 this block okay so we are going to add this directive here uh, this is going to capture key down and it's going to call close on esc for yeah when the focus is on this block and what we're going to do is again like create an action uh, for this uh, handler and then the action here. We're go what we are going to do here is that uh, we have access to the event. Uh, you always have access to the event in actions. So if the key is escape, then we're going to do selected equals null. So we're going to mutate the global state. And that's going to kind of trigger all the changes. Uh, it's going to close the thing. It's going to change the area expanded and so on. And then we're going to change the focus back to the button with the area controls that starts with with, because we want to change the focus to, um, yeah, to this one here, to this button here, it's the toggle button. Okay. So let's see if that works. We are here, the focus is here, we click on ask, focus is back to open menu, click here, focus is here, click on ask, Okay, let me see what is step 13. Okay, step 13 is when we, yeah. step 13 is um, when we start adding um, things um, for, to make it work with the other component. Um, I think I'm gonna stop here. Uh, there are other directives for example, class uh, active, which uh, are useful here. So we have uh, the class WP class directive and the WP style directive. Wherever you pass here, it's a class that's going to be added or removed depending on this value. Okay. Um, yeah, but there's only 10 minutes left. So I want you to show you some examples of more complex blocks. Uh, uh, I hope you can still do these steps at home because uh, from now, from here, it's basically these all the time. There may be like here, WP class to change the class names. But from this moment until we get to the, to the point where I showed you, it's about storing things in mi mix of local state, global state, creating more selectors, and using WP bind, WP text, WP class to make the UI react to all of this and pre-populate the state uh, in the server for that. Like, there are no new concepts. Maybe we can take a quick look, so. I discard all these, go to main. Well, you will see that, yeah, here the state is bigger. We move the quizzes to an array to say which, uh, which is the current value, which is the correct value. We are serializing the correct value from the answers. Um, so we can then uh, there are more selectors to know if the if one of the quizzes has been answered or not. Most of the things are selectors here, um, and there's the other block, the quiz progress. Okay, we also have a render. We also have a view, and here you have a bunch of selectors uh, to output the name of uh, answered questions. If all questions are answered, the name of correct questions, if correct questions are answered, an action to check the answers, 
returns like global like show answers true. So when and everything is connected, like when all the questions are answered, then uh, for example, this button disable change to true. So you can click it, and then you can see how many questions are here. You can see if all the, of them are correct, and so congratulations. You can now show a, a different button, reset button here. But again, everything from now on is done creating more selectors, more actions, mutating the state, and repeating the process in all over again, adding WP text, WP bind, WP disable, and click, and so on. So a bit more example, but it was a complex uh, example, but nothing new, and it, it, also, it also scales really well. So for example, at the end of, the, um, of the, this uh, demo, you haven't touched area expanded from the beginning, but as long as, uh, for example, you have this, uh, and this area expanded here is true, because this is open, when you click on check answers, it's gonna be false, okay? Because, yeah, it reset uh, the, the openings, and if you click a key here, it's true, if you reset, Oh no, okay, it's only when you click on reset. Okay, uh, the thing is that this scales really well, even though things start getting more complex, and, but as, as this is declarative and reactive, you just keep adding selectors, mutating the state, and everything that is pointing to some variable, it stays like that. Okay, I wanted to show you a couple of examples. So I hope you have a grasp of what, how to code with this interactivity API. And it's all about this concept, directives, action selectors, effects. So, for example, uh, I wanted to show you how's the code for this uh, instance search. So you can see uh, how difficult it is to create something like that. So this, this would be this block here. Uh, and if you search for things, it kind of refreshes the page. So this is here, movies demo, repository, blocks. Interactive blocks, and this is the movie search. Okay. This is, this is the view GES for this, uh, sorry, for this block, okay? It's, it's very small. It doesn't have accessibility, we should add accessibility to it. But other than that, it's just uh, getting some, setting some value, okay? Uh, the WP Move it Search, and then if the value of this is, um, is nothing, we navigate to the home page. If not, we kind of do the uh, we compute the uh, query loops, uh, the query uh, parameters for this URL, and we navigate to that URL. It's that simple. And then in the render PHP, we pre-populate the store with the search query, <coughs> and the search value. So it's prepared from the beginning. So it's not like this example was simple uh, and but th when things are more, more complex, like they really get very complex with this API, uh, there's still like very complex things are made like quite easy, uh, in my opinion. So this is one thing that I wanted to show. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to show, well, there's a, if you go to Gutenberg, there's also the navigation block, now it's working like that. Um, the navigation block, the last, the previous implementation used to be like four kilobytes. Now it's just one kilobyte, uh, which means that the code that you need for the same, like we replicated, we actually, well, we, first we replicated uh, the um, the functionality of the of the navigation block. So we and we reduce it from four kilobytes to one kilobyte, uh, which means that you have to write one fourth of the code uh, by switching from vanilla JavaScript to this declarative reactive uh, thing. 
Well, I'm not going to show you that, uh, but it's in Gutenberg in packages, uh, block library, and so on. You can take a look if you want. You're going to see something like very similar to this. And I wanted to show another um, example with, I think it's interesting, relevant, and how this API is very native to WordPress, even though you're kind of building a React application. And it's, uh, yeah. So doing client-side form submissions of the comments. So WordPress comments, you click on, you, you send the comment, it refreshes the page, it reloads everything again, and there is your comment. So, and we did an experiment here, it is a bit old, but it works. And this is the code that it takes to turn the server-side form submi uh, comment submission to client-side. Um, this is it. This is the Vue.js to do that. Um, there is, so in the HTML, all we had to do was uh, to add like a new div here to show the errors, okay? So it's a new div with that WP text and then whatever error it's, uh, it gets. And then, yeah, just search for the form with ID comment form and inject, this is, uh, by the way, this is the HTML tag processor that I was talking about. You just search for this form with the ID comment form, which should always be there, even though like in all themes, uh, Maybe you've changed the HTML, you were using a comments plugin that changes the aesthetics or whatever, and this should work in all the cases. So it should be 100% backward compatible. You just have to inject a data on uh, submit. Uh, we were using dots before, but it's the same directive, so data on submit, and then point to this file, which is the yes file here, and what's happening behind the scenes is that it's preventing the default server side rendering, then, well, it's resetting the error, and then it's doing a fetch to the exact same point that the server side render is doing with, with the same form data from, from the form. It's doing that, except that it's doing it in the client, and then we're getting an HTML from that response. And yeah, and if the status is not 200, it means there's an error. If there's an error, uh, I don't know if you remember, but comments, if you, if there's an error, your theme goes away and just is displayed like on a top thing. And that's inside a peer in the inner HTML. So we get that error. <laughs> and then, yeah, if there's an error, we just change, we, we mutate this global state. So the error appears in the div that we created. And if not, we do a navigation in the same way that you saw the navigations happening here in the movies demo, okay? Uh, with the new HTML, and we reset the, the form. And that's it, that's all it takes with this API to change from server-side render comments for submission to client-side form submission with backward compatibility with all the things because we can inject, we can just inject directives here. Okay. Um, Last but not least, this is a steel proposal. This, there's a steel, uh, we're still shaping this API. Uh, uh, so just, uh, we wanna have a conversation with as many people as possible, knowing about the use cases. So from, uh, we've been working on this repository for a while, because at the beginning this was very uh, exploratory, and we didn't want to make uh, noise for the rest of uh, Gutenberg contributors. Um, so there are discussions here. If you come to this block interactivity experiments repository, you can just come here, ask questions, share anything like what do you need to do? Uh, if you try this and get stuck, come here and say so. I would have, I, I would hope, yeah, I want to give, to ask for permission. Now we're moving things from that repository to Gutenberg. So I want to ask permission 
to create here in the discuss discussions um, tab of uh, GitHub to add a new one called Interactivity API. So we can centralize the conversation here and just stop using th that old repository and move everything to Gutenberg. Uh, so I hope we can do. Um, so yeah, uh, well, if, if you go to the other one and, and there's this new one here, um, yeah, well, I hope we can centralize there the conversation. Cause yeah, like we really, like we've gone already, um, it, uh, gone like very far with this, but we need as many real use, uses of these. Uh, we need to see the patterns, we need to save the API, uh, and for that we need as much help uh, as we can have. And particularly for me, uh, I'm on Twitter, I'm on GitHub, I'm on Slack, I'm always at Luis Arranz, so you can also ping me. Um, I'm gonna try to uh, tweet about uh, the progress on the interactivity API you want to follow, uh, the things that we change. Um, yeah, there was another one thing here. Uh, if you have a private project and you want to create a website with these type of experiences, so it's going to take a while until this, until this is merged with WordPress, but you want to use, if you want to use it now, have a project project, something like that, talk with me um, or with any other, uh, any, any of the other contributors. There's uh, things that can be done. We are working, uh, for example, with Woo um, to create something that it's kind of uh, bundled by, by them, but they can use it now. And once, once Core has this, like the transition is like just changing a file or something like that. So yeah, please, please, please give us feedback. Uh, come to the discussions now in the block interactivity experiments, but hopefully soon in the Gutenberg main repo. And yeah, don't be shy to ask, share, because that's basically what we need at this point. Yeah, thank you.